Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have a card featured over at the Lawnscaping blog. Today is my day to feature some inspiration and for this set of cards I decided to start with the stitched borders from Lawn Fawn. These are dies but they do not cut all the way through the paper. Instead they just cut some stitched details into the paper. And I had the idea of using them all together in a row to create a diagonal stripe across the card and then layer it with some distress ink. And at first I thought that I wanted to leave some space in between the different borders and so I'm using a craft mat with some grid lines to line them up and make sure they're straight. Because I'm going to be putting it diagonally across my card, I don't have to worry if the outside edges are lined up, I just want them all to be straight. And I'm going to tape them together, tape the dies together with washi tape, so that way I can use this set of dies with the same width over a number of backgrounds if I wanted to, because I knew I would be trying to create a card set. Sometimes I feel like when experimenting with an idea like this, it's better to make a couple of cards at a time because um, there's a lot of setup involved in these sort of things. And so I decided to try it with the um, die set apart a little bit wider. I ran it through my die cut machine and I felt like that was a little too big. Um, I wanted to be able to put a little bit of masking tape over it so then I could layer on the distressing blending and leave that area white. And I just felt like when I saw it finished that was a little bit too much white space. So I decided to just put the dies straight up against each other and see how that looks. And it also allowed me to kind of shift them around and make sure that I liked the um, pattern of the dies because there are four different stitch patterns there and I wanted to make sure that they were um, in a pattern that I found pleasing. So now I'm going to cover them with some painter's tape to do some distress ink blending around them. I wanted to use painter's tape because I knew that it would stick really solidly to the paper but I also didn't want it to rip the paper. So what I decided to do is just to um, place it on my arm because when you put it on your skin it picks up a little bit of the oil off your skin and isn't quite as sticky and so that's going to help it not tear the paper. I also found that it was easier to put the tape on my craft mat and line up the diagonal by flipping the card over rather than placing the tape on top. Since you can't see through the tape, you won't know if it's matching up with the diagonals. Whereas if you flip your card over, you'll be able to see better that the um, tape edges are lining up. And then I wrapped the masking tape around the edges just to make sure that I could, that you know everything was protected and that I could also move the card around a little bit so it wouldn't be taped down to my surface if I left those on my craft sheet edge there. I am going to be using three different colors of distress ink on each of the cards and I decided to do one card with some warm color blends and the other card with some cool color blends. So I picked a reddish color, an orange color, and a yellow color. I had picked abandoned coral, wild honey, and fossilized amber. I start with the reddish color on the top and work down to yellow in rainbow order. But what I found is that the wild honey and the fossilized amber are really close in color. I almost could not even tell the difference. And while I appreciate both colors and I think sometimes it's nice to have some subtle differences, I did want it to be a little bit more clear that this was um, a red, orange, yellow blend. And so after I put on the fossilized amber and I'm not seeing too much of a difference between the wild honey and fossilized amber, I decided to go back with the um, ripe persimmon as I knew that that would be more of an orange. When I created these two cards it was interesting because the um, colors that I create for the cool card are so different from each other and um, yet the cool colors they all have this sort of um, reddish undertone like the abandoned coral is a very orangey red and then um, I actually went with spiced marmalade for the orange. I remember that I thought the ripe persimmon might be too close to abandoned abandoned coral because it's too red um, and then um, the fossilized amber is such a yellowy orange that the fade was very subtle and it was more like an ombre but then with these cool colors I went with twisted citron mermaid lagoon and seedless preserves and they are very different from each other and what I love about distressings is whether I use three colors that are really close together like on the warm colored card 
or I choose three colors that are really far away from each other, like on this cool colored card, they still blend beautifully and look great. And so that's why Distress Inks are always going to be one of my go-tos. Um, combining Lawn Fawn and Distress Ink m just makes my heart happy. I love both of those companies. I think what they do, both of them, what they do is great. They look good together, and there's so many fun techniques to use them together. So I find myself commonly mixing them up. And so when I create these blends, I am going to lay down a color, and then the, the um, lay down the first color, go to the second color, come back in with the first color just to make sure it's blended out. So I'm pulling each card or each color to the card base twice. Now when I pull up the painter's tape I'm going to be super careful because it, even though I put it on my arm and try to make it a little less sticky it was pulling at the paper a little bit particularly where those cross hatches were and at this point this was kind of as far as I had envisioned the card in my head and I didn't really know what I was going to do to finish it off. I like the idea of a black sentiment, partly in that white area of the cards, because I knew that that would make it pop. And um, I didn't know if I just kind of wanted to let the Distress Ink Blend be the star of the show, or if I wanted to add more detail. So, like I said, I know I'm going to add a black die cut sentiment, so I have the scripty hello, but I'll also use the scripty thanks. And I matted it on a piece of black cardstock because those distress panels are cut with the Lawn Fawn Stitched Rectangle die. And I decided that I kind of wanted a little bit more to this card. I was really liking the blends. I was liking that subtle texture that was added in the white areas by those stitched borders. But I just wanted to go an extra layer. And so I picked the Starry Backdrops from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to be covering part of the distressing panel with the starry backdrops and then using the your star sentiment from the so jelly stamp set. I like that this gives me another use for that so jelly sentiment rather than just using it with the starfish being able to use it with some other stamp sets too. Because I only want the stars to be in the top portion of the distress panel and leave room for that you're a star sentiment in the bottom portion, I am going to cover up starting from the white edge with some post-it notes. These were some promotional post-it notes that I have a whole stack of and so I don't mind um, using a whole post-it note for this or using two whole post-it notes for this purpose and then I can throw them away because I'm actually going to get some embossing powder melted onto them. So I stamped the starry backdrops with Versamark ink and then I'm going to put some clear embossing powder over it and it's going to give a really subtle background effect. Um, and I like that because I didn't want the background to be the star of the show. I just wanted it to um, play off that punny sentiment and really enhance what was going on with the Distress Ink. So it's going to take two stampings to um, cover the whole card with the starry backdrops, but they're pretty easy to line up. I do recommend embossing in between, like heating up the embossing powder in between, so it's a little bit easier to see where your stars are, and you won't accidentally mess up any of the embossing powder as you're going to stamp the second time. And so now that I um, have that star background, I think that that was enough. That was that little bit extra that the card needed. And so I'm ready to complete it with the sentiments. I'm going to just clear emboss the sentiment, but stamp it in VersaFine ink first and put the clear embossing powder over it just so that it really stands out because it is in that dark purple area of the card and I want it to be readable. It's going to be on the yellow on the other card, so it's already a little bit more readable, but just for consistency, I embossed both of them. So I did the same exact thing to that warm colored card. Now, since there was clear embossing on the stars and on the Eurostar sentiment, I thought that it would look a little bit better and more consistent if the um, large sentiment was also sort of that clear glossy effect. So I'm actually just taking my glossy accents with that really thin tip and tracing over the entire sentiment. I think that that thin tip allows this to be a lot easier and I find that it, I get less air bubbles but I have to just be consistent and not go back and forth too much but just um, keep even pressure the entire time on the bottle and um, go smoothly over the whole surface. And so once I have the glossy accents added, that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
If you're interested in more crafting tutorials featuring Distress Ink, Lawn Fawn, Newton's Nook, all that good stuff, you know you can find that right here on my channel, so be sure to subscribe. And I will also leave you a link to the Lawnscaping blog where you can join in our latest back to school challenge. Thanks for watching. Bye.